All right, it's the Smack Talker, Girl Hoarder, H-A-W-K, all night, all day. Holy hawk, it's been eight months since I've done one of these videos, so I guess I'm bringing it back. Yes, this is the How Bad Can It Be Belt, the show where I'm on a mission to find the worst wrestling shows of all time. It's Winner Stays On, and the current champion is an episode of WCW Nitro from May 1st, 2000. That show featured no good matches, Tank Abbott and David Arquette all over the show, no comedy, no star power as far as the Attitude Era goes, and it just felt depressing to watch. For some reason, people just recommend me to watch WCW shows on this series, and that's happened once again. This time it's WCW Nitro from March 8th, 1999, which was recommended to me in the YouTube comments section by Cosmic Gorilla Boy. See, I do read my comments. You never know if your idea could get used by the Hawk. Those are the cards that you dealt, so you're best off smacking it in the comments until it's felt. The show starts off with an interview recap from Thunder. It's Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, and it's so poorly mic'd I can barely hear it. Apparently Arn Anderson wants to beat up Ric Flair's son David, and David is also being a dick to his dad. And it just goes on. And on. And on. This would be perfectly acceptable if Flair was cutting an entertaining over the top promo, but he just looks exhausted. Flair is moaning that David has been stealing from him. Is this seriously still going on? This is really testing their new and improved positive hope. Flair says it's his time now and he's going to be the 14 time world champion. Always sounds weird not hearing 50. Now Flair is worried about his son hanging around with the NWO. We are now an entire 6 minutes into the show. Are they insane? What's happened here? It's not even a recap, it's the entire interview that already aired on Thunder. Why was it necessary to play the entire thing twice? Arn Anderson storms off, but I know how he feels. 7 minutes and 20 seconds. Worst start to a wrestling show ever. We cut to the Nitro girls who are advertising spring break in Rhode Island. This goes on forever to a stupid montage of clips from the same lame Nitro party. We cut from that to more clips from the Nitro party. I do admittedly like the announcer they have for these. He's like a young Eric Bischoff might have been before Hogan went to his brain and turned him miserable. A man who says he's called Kazarian as one, I'm not making this up, it's what he said his name was. Oh my god, now a collection of Nitro girl interviews about how they learn to dance. What am I watching here for god's sake, is this Nitro or Saturday night? Why is all this irrelevant garbage on the main show? One of the Nitro girls apparently had a hard life and her dad got electrocuted. I kid you not, we cut from that to an NWO broadcast. It's the Hawkster, apparently his son hates him too. Lots of people with difficult family lives on this show. Hogan changes his mind and says he does it for the money and his son isn't even important. Hogan laughs about Flair's love of wrestling and he's a rotten piece of crap. We're now 14 minutes into the show and we haven't even seen the arena. Presuming this is an actual wrestling show. He basically calls Flair a mark over and over again for 5 minutes. They'll be having a match at uncensored. At this point this Hogan interview might have lasted longer than the Flair interview. Couldn't they have had an in ring segment to hype this stuff? Finally it's over at 17 and a half minutes. Oh no a Kevin Nash voiceover and it's another NWA segment. Nash and Hogan are watching Ric Flair on telly. Nash says it's better to be the nature boy than to be a father. Why is this even necessary? We've already had what's going on explained five times in these interviews. We don't need to know what the segments actually look like. Get to the point, WCW. They go on making fun of Flair's promo forever. I know I exaggerate sometimes on this channel, but this is without a doubt the worst wrestling show that I've ever seen so far. All that really matters is that they'll be having a barbed wire cage match uncensored. This is the least entertaining Eva man has ever been. It ends at 24 minutes. But it's not really over because now it's a video package about NWO Lex Luger. There's only so many slow motion clotheslines I can stand to watch. From that back some more spring break highlights. Steiner was pulled over by cops in Boston. Not surprised with how he's known to be driving. The cops recognise Steiner and Bagwell. The cops say they won't give them a ticket if for some reason they do some police work for them. This seems to mainly involve stopping people from smoking cigarettes, attacking people who haven't paid for their parking and stopping littering. The cops eventually agree that they're free to go. If you ask me it would have been much better to have a ticket, it would have cost less time. This was the least entertaining Scott Steiner has ever been. Yay, more Nitro parties. Billy Kidman is bragging about how many women he gets. Apparently the cruiserweight division is now better than ever due to Kevin Nash and Rey Mysterio feuding. Kidman says it's helped to make the division more important. I hate this show so much. Yay, highlights of Kevin Nash and Rey Mysterio having that match that they were talking about. I don't know if I can stomach any more of these New World Order segments. Hogan and Nash visit Tory Wilson at a shooting range. They're all plotting about David Flair. Tory can't come with them because she's going to carry on shooting, she says for the next couple of hours. 
They agree to meet for dinner later. We didn't even get to see her shooting her gun. What a waste of time, over half an hour in. Nash's voice is like nails on a chalkboard to me at this point. We're now at that dinner party. Apparently, Tori Wilson has a friend that's so hot that she can take care of David. They discuss how hot the friend could possibly be, seeing as Tori is a 10. This discussion goes on forever. Just show the friend already. They've hyped her up so much, she's probably going to turn up to look like a shoe after all this hype. She does show up eventually, and it turns out that she's about a 6. She agrees to do something to David in exchange for 20 grand. Hogan and Nash are pimps, apparently. It just goes on and on about if she's hot or not. She's not. Oh, wow. The intro credits for Nitro play 37 minutes into the show. Is something finally about to happen? Oh, wow. The arena. I am watching a wrestling show. A match? No. Mean Jean's doing an interview segment because we haven't seen enough of them so far on this show. Out walks David Flair with Tori Wilson on his arm. What happened to the girl they paid off? Shouldn't she be with them? Mean Gene tells David Flair this is supposed to be a Goldberg interview. David said he's not going to leave the ring until his dad talks to him. He looks so weird with brown hair. Goldberg's music hits and for some reason David Flair isn't even intimidated by this. Goldberg's looking extra roidy on this show. Goldberg tells David he has a lot of respect for the Flair family and that means he won't beat David up. Then he starts choking David which causes Ric Flair to rush to the ring. Goldberg no sells the Ric Flair chops and David bells. Goldberg gorilla presses Flair and he dumps his nappy of fear. They yell at each other for a while. It's the highlight of the show so far because they both look nuts. They agree to have a match tonight, which gets a massive cheer from the crowd. Wow, I didn't know anyone was having any matches on this show. We come back from an advert break to see a hardcore match between Hardcore Hack and Raven. Sandman ends up in the corner on his head and he's caned. Hack looks morbidly obese here. Hack kicks Raven away from the ring and he massively oversells his fall into the fence. Sandman hits his guillotine leg drop off the ring apron, so we might as well turn the match off now. Nothing else good that's going to happen here. The crowd chant ECW. A suplex is attempted on the ramp, which Raven reverses into one of his own. Sandman grabs his ass and screams with pain. A table is here now. Sandman lies down on it and Raven half-heartedly climbs up the Titan Tron to hit an elbow. Just a waste of time. Bam Bam Bigelow waddles out like a big lump. He starts throwing the two guys around and the ref rings the bell. Not sure why when it's Raven rules, aka no DQ. Pretty stupid. All three guys smash into each other like morons, and it's almost like another match. Wait, the commentators say the ref has made a mistake and the match isn't actually over because it's Raven's rules. In the back, Raven goes sliding into a wall with a table. Saman sent upside down into a ladder, then Bam Bam drops a ladder on top of him. Hack looks like he's already dead at this point. They brawl next to an ambulance. Raven's sister Chastity is dancing around in the background like an idiot on ice. Sandman is put into a car and shoved into an ambulance. It doesn't look very impressive. Hack keeps getting up, so they back body drop him onto Flair's limo. Raven hits him with an even flow too, but Bigelow immediately squashes Raven into the limo. The car sounds like it's dying. Bam Bam with a double leg on Raven into a headbutt to the nutsack. The fight is really dragging. Someone in the crowd can be heard loudly chanting, boring. Sandman goes face first into the windscreen, which breaks. Bigelow's a dick and throws Raven on top of Sandman. Bigelow just keeps smacking them, but Raven isn't done. Surprisingly, Hack's back up now too. All three carry on lumbering around the backstage area, but it just randomly ends. So I guess the commentators were wrong, and it did actually end earlier on. They'll be having a match uncensored. A complete waste of time. We still haven't got to see anything that resembles an actual wrestling match, and we're now halfway into the show. Well, I shouldn't worry too much, because after an entire hour, we will have a match taking place in the ring. Liz Mark Jr. will take on Chris Jericho with Ralphus. He has a dog collar around his neck. He starts cutting a promo and Tony Schiavone sounds genuinely annoyed that he was interrupted. He's got Perry sat in it uncensored. The crowd are pretty loud for Jericho at this point. He tells Liz Mark that they'll be having a dog collar match right now. Jericho clotheslines him down straight away. Liz Mark responds with a drop kick. He tries a monkey flip which doesn't work and Jericho throws him from the top rope. Jericho wraps the chain around his knee and hits a knee drop. The cocky pin gets him a two. Jericho's a full blown character at this point. Jericho runs around Liz Mark with a chain like some sort of cartoon and then he kicks him down. Jericho starts getting too cocky and it enables Liz Mark to choke him across the ropes. He comes back into the ring with a double act handle which doesn't work. The crowd is sounding really restless at this point so Jericho quickly puts on the walls for the tap out win. Not a good match. Here's Scott Steiner and Buff Bagwell again. Fortunately they aren't playing cops and robbers this time. Steiner cuts a promo call in the crowd scumbags who are a disgrace to the human race. There's nothing finer than Scott Steiner. Huge crowd reactions for Steiner's promo too. 
Bagwell gets to speak too and says he tried to persuade Booker T to back out of the upcoming match, but he was too dumb. Here's Booker. Bagwell's being really wacky here. Steiner seems to be dominating the match until he walks into a diving forearm. Scott Steiner keeps making mistakes and walks into a spin kick now. Bagwell drags Steiner out of the ring. For some reason, he stays out there for way more than the 10 count. Steiner comes back in with a single leg showing shades of his amateur days. He doesn't keep Booker down for long and soon he has to try and combat Booker's flurry of offense again. He does that of a kick to the nutsack. Steiner pins Booker with his feet on the ropes. It doesn't work and Steiner throws Booker out of the ring. Bagwell attacks Booker on the outside, but no DQ. There's loud steroids chants now. Wonder when the first steroid chant happened in wrestling. We come back from an advert break with Steiner still in control. Nice belly to belly suplex now. Bagwell is saying goofy things into the camera. What a goon. Steiner doesn't seem to be in much of a hurry here. It's a backbreaker now. Booker has a brief hope spot now when he almost rolls Steiner up. Scott Steiner responds with a nice butterfly suplex. This match isn't bad. Booker finally reverses a suplex and hits a net breaker of his own. That is the setup for the axe kick. Steiner doesn't stay down long from that though. Now Booker hits a big flapjack into the spinner Rooney. Another kick from Booker and the crowd have woken up. Booker wants to dive but he's stopped by Buff. The Steiner recliner is locked on and eventually Booker T is done. Weird moment because the commentators are confused to fit Booker T is fighting off the move, but Steiner has won. He's a bad winner too, so he smacks Booker with a chair. Man, Buff Bagwell was such a cheerleader. This match actually got some decent time, and if you take away how annoying Bagwell was, it was a good TV match. The Nitro Girls dance for ages now, even though we've seen constant Nitro Girl stuff on the show already. In the back, Jerry Flynn is almost interviewed, but Sonny Uno interrupts before he can say anything. The Cat and Sonny Uno beat him up. What an annoying collection of people. Sonny cuts off Jerry Flynn's ponytail. Oh great, it's Scott Norton. My positivity is vanishing by the second. Then I learn that Scott Norton is having a singles match with Rey Mysterio. Mysterio somehow looks smaller than ever without a mask. Norton smashes him down like a brick to the jaw. Now he picks him up by the throat and drops him to the mat. Rey looks like a crash chest dummy as he's thrown around the ring. This one goes a lot longer than I expected. I'm struggling to concentrate. Scott Norton is sending me to sleep. It would help if he could at least do some fun power moves. He is in complete control, but decides to throw Ray out of the ring. I guess that this match is going even longer. Norton pulls Ray up by his nappy, but he's still not doing anything interesting. Ray fights out of a shoulder breaker attempt, but he crashes into the corner turnbuckle. Norton immediately crushes Ray of a big suplex. He breaks his own pin up though. Now it's a one-handed press slam. Again, Norton doesn't want to make a pin. Then out of nowhere, Ray hits one kick, which somehow knocks out Scott Norton and Ray instantly pins him. Now it's time for the WCW Smack of the Night. Sponsored by all new Blonde for Men. If you're a brown haired potter, put some blonde in it. It makes you look potter. Oh man, we got this big jacked up dude, Scott Norton. He's fighting Rey Mysterio, who hasn't got a mask on, but he has got a pea head. Man, it's David vs. Goliath. Oh, Mysterio crazes him with a kick to the nuts. And oh my god, that's the free. That was the Smack of the Week, sponsored by Blonde, just for men. Get it? Got it? Shove it. Oh, come on, this match did nothing to make Ray look good. It made him look incredibly lucky. Based on that performance, why would Nash ever be scared of Ray? Scott Norton had him beat several times, but broke his own pins up. A dumb, slow match which accomplished nothing at all. Yay, another match. The pacing of the show is so weird. Van Hammer's having a match. Great, first Scott Norton and now Van Hammer. Yes, this is the flagship show Nitro. Wait, Van Hammer is taking on Bret Hart. Well, that's random. Van Hammer actually has the better of Hart in the early stages. He just looks a bit clumsy whenever he does anything. I can't believe Bret Hart is facing Van Hammer. Bret looks completely miserable too. Bret comes back into the ring with Van Hammer still in control of the match, but he won't let go of the arm ringers. Hammer's like a vicious camel that won't stop humping Bret. Bret eventually gets annoyed and chops Hammer down to Bret's own size. Bret starts working on his leg. He puts on a figure four leg lock. Who are we supposed to be cheering for in this one? I'm dumb, someone tell me. I've taken too many bricks to the brain at this point. Hammer finally makes the ropes. Brett dumps in his nappy of anger. Couple of pinning attempts follow from Van Hammer now. Of course, this guy is not beating Brett Hart. More leg work from Hart now. He wraps Van Hammer's leg around the ring pole a couple of times. He wants to pull Hammer into the ring pole, nutsack first, which is reversed, and Brett meathead smashes into the pole. Hammer manages a big vertical suplex in the ring, but he's really struggling to walk at this point. Van Hammer hits a Cobra Clutch Slam, and the commentary team are confused whether or not that was Van Hammer's finisher. Bret Hart kicks out, so I guess it wasn't this finisher. Bret ducks an Inziguri and puts on the sharpshooter. It's over. 
A fine match, but I have to question why Van Hammer gets the longest match on the show. Brett is a bad winner, so he smashes Hammer with a steel chair. Next up, we've got Hogan and Nash again, but they're actually in the arena this time. They're just here to do commentary. Shivani is allowed to stay on the commentary desk with Nash and Hogan. They're just here to watch the main event, Ric Flair's taking on Bill Goldberg. They're fighting over the fight that they had over David Flair earlier in the night. You'd think this match would be something they'd want to save for pay-per-view, I guess not. Goldberg keeps shoving Flair down. Flair looks horrified, but then he woos in Goldberg's face. Now Goldberg stands still as Flair runs into him time and time again, which causes the crowd to loudly laugh at Flair. Flair runs into the Goldberg Gorilla Press Slam and he falls out of the ring crying. The crowd are definitely favouring Goldberg here. He gets tired of Flair's stalling on the outside of the ring and carries him back into the squared circle. Thus the opening for Flair to start using his antics to get the advantage. A punch to the nutsack which Goldberg is forced to finally sell. Flair isn't hanging around and he gets the figure four leg lock in. Goldberg gets out of that move and he dumps Flair to the mat. He sends Flair running who does his famous roll out of the ring. Now Flair is thrown from the top. Seconds later Goldberg smashes into the ring pole. Not sure which way this one's going. Flair suplexes Goldberg which he no sells. Now the spear does connect for Goldberg. He can't do anything else because the NWO D team start attacking Goldberg. Not sure how that makes any sense, wouldn't they want Goldberg and Flair to destroy each other considering that Hogan has to face Flair on the next pay-per-view? What idiot planned this show? This whole show makes no sense. The NWO team beat up Flair and Goldberg as the show goes off the air and I sure didn't care. Wow, almost half of this show was the definition of nothing. What made them think this show was a good idea? I actually had to check halfway through I was even watching an episode of Nitro which is supposed to be the flagship show. There was certainly no action to be found here. If Goldberg wasn't on this show, it would have been the deadest show of all time. This is a tough call for me because after the first hour, the in-ring action was actually decent. But the way I'm going to do this is... Let's imagine we were watching the show at the time in 1999. I'm pretty sure my hyperactive brain would have turned the show off after nothing happened for the first 10 minutes. I certainly wouldn't have made it another 50 minutes with nothing happening. I would never have got to see any of the decent matches that took place after the talking was done. This episode of Nitro also got the second worst viewership of the year up to that point. So for the piss poor planning and the fact I doubted I was even watching a wrestling show, I have to crown this episode of Nitro the new champion of the How Bad Can It Be belt. But if you know a worse episode of wrestling, smack it in the comments until it's felt.